Uh, good evening. Good evening and um, welcome to um, the presentation of the Master of Interior Space Design. Um, tonight we have um, the opportunity to get deeper uh, into um, this course in terms of content, structure, and the goals. Uh, first, I'd like to point out that um, even though the master's course is aimed at students who wish to uh, specialize in interior design, it doesn't necessarily mean that you must have graduated in interior design. Students uh, graduated in other disciplines close to design, like architecture or um, building engineers or have graduated in fine arts, for, for example, um, and who have kind of experience in their fields are also invited to enroll in this master course of interior design. So first, um, I'd like to introduce ourselves. Uh, this is Pen Pep Van Berg, who's an architect, and I'm Daniela Hartmann, an interior designer. We both are the co-directors of the postgraduate courses Workspace and Interior Space Design Private Parameters. Um, these two postgraduate courses constitute the whole master. So that said, you could decide um, to study one of the two postgraduate courses independently and obtain uh, the diploma of each of them. Or you can enroll in both and obtain the master's, master's degree after one uh, academic year. Um, though the two postgraduate courses are slightly different in their structure and also um, deal with different subjects during, uh, during the course, actually they both um, offer an education that has one main objective, uh, and this is to promote uh, creativity, and innovation in interior design. Um, the master course prepares the students to gain uh, an ability, let's say, that is, um, uh, or, or let's say it's like three pillars of, of the whole course. The first thing is to improve the spatial and functional quality of the interiors. Um, to gain ability to ensure the well-being of the user, the well-being of the client, if you want. Um, that means understanding the client's brief, the client's necessities and needs. Um, to gain the ability to be sensitive towards the environment and conditions in which you develop a project. Um, that could be cultural, that could be ecological, social, and um, other conditions that have an impact on the design solution. Um, these three pillars are, of course, supported by a dense program that provides advanced knowledge in theory and practice of designing interior spaces that encourage and foster a reflective and critical attitude by the students, which is fundamental and necessary when you engage in a creative pro uh, process. Um, uh, it also engages students in different phases of the design process. And uh, when we talk about design process, we mean concept generation, we mean space programming, functional diagrams, etc., etc. But also introduce you to specific materials you might use, furnishing, building techniques, and many other subjects that will help you to tackle the design problems and for, uh, especially to to correctly execute your designs. Um, with this said, um, this is the global idea of, of the master. And now we will uh, explain more in detail what uh, the postgraduate courses um, are about. Maybe you take over? Sure. Thank you, Daniela. Uh, hello. As well, as you said, uh, and good evening. Um, my name is Pep Benberg, and I am an architect from Barcelona with more than 15 years of professional experience. I've been involved in different design projects, including a wide range of uses, typologies, and scales, going from urban planning to, of course, interior design. Now, as co-director of the Workspace Postgraduate, together with Ricardo Guasque, 
I would like to briefly drive you through the most significant issues of our program. The first point to talk about is the content of our uh, workspace program and somehow it's uh, what we do in the course. Obviously, this is a postgraduate based on the design of an interior space with a major function to create a space for working. And as you may know, nowadays a work topic is mainly linked to the meaning of being productive at the workplace. Once we have framed the starting point of our postgraduate matter, it's a must to mention that many reports are may pick, uh, mapping out the importance of the built environment as a crucial issue of the productivity of uh, the employee. Therefore, the workplace has turned from a production mechanical fixed place to a wealthy, inclusive, and warm space for the worker to be productive. Today, it is a place where to socialize even more than what we do online. It is a place that needs a flexible design to allow mobility and an organic development. It is also a space for crossing knowledge to empower employees and drive business to better, to better results. It is an interior architecture which parameters of design has to do more and more with learning ecosystems, research and innovation labs and the micropolitics of the public space. As you will see, during different lessons, lectures and workshops, we will gather a lot of information and discussions on subjects like user-centered design, biophilia, and active ergonomics. Through active ergonomics, we will work on giving a proper solution to the most important comfort standards, light, both natural and artificial light, temperature conditions, body ergonomics, not only thinking in sitting in place, but also in the mobility in within the space, and last but not least, acoustics, a key issue in current interior design. In addition, we will also get involved over biophilic design, one of the most trendy issues in workspace evolution, as a field where to research the need of the workspace user to feel close to nature. Thus, it's our intention to discuss together with the students the best way to bring this feeling into the interior space without creating fake and gimmick spaces. In order to do so, we will do some research on planscaping, somehow it means an interior landscaping, and the inclusion of vegetation and greenery. Moreover, we look for new natural materials and sophisticated solutions that can be integrated in workspace projects such as Adobe Earth, which can also bring this feeling of nature into the interior. All this specific and let's say more contemporary content completes the following core topics of the program. One, the history of the workspace from the 19th century until today. Also the rational planning guidelines, including real estate requirements, as well the different layout of the workspace based on the user behavior. The user has to produce, to socialize, to appropriate, and to concentrate. And the different levels of outfitting and equipment from lighting to air condition, from dry solutions to furniture. With all this content explained, it is our aim to provide the student with the right tools, narrative, and methodology for them to be able, at the end of the program, to give professional response to the most contemporary design requirements of the workspace. How we do it? Let's talk about methodology. We like to work in a really intense process that takes from September till early February. We understand that through intensity, we will get as much as possible from the students. So we will work in three different exercises. The first challenge is to design an informal display to give an answer to the different behaviors of the workspace user. There are not many constraints in this first exercise. It definitely seeks to empower the student by working on a space that has few to do with conventional office design, pushing the student through a critical process where to 
question design belief you have previously accepted with no questioning. It takes more or less one week and a half. <laughs> the second workshop becomes more corporate and rational, starting with a brand analysis of a specific company and developing a project at four different levels, depending, depending as said before, on its function, the workplace, shared spaces, informal spaces, and concentration spaces. It takes more or less two weeks and a half. And then, like the final project, let's say it's like a more uh, conventional process where we are gonna work with a real company, with real needs, and uh, with the help of a tutor. Uh, well, the tutor is gonna somehow give like the right guidance to the student for her um, to produce the project she wants to do. Okay? We are not like imposing a way to do things. We are next to the student, okay, for him, for her, to find the best solution or the best translation into physical space. And uh, finally, I would like to mention more or less like the groups we have had in previous versions of the of the workspace postgraduate. We have an average group of 20 people, more or less, with a wide range of academic background and cultural roots. And we are always seeking the student professional growth, both individual and collective. We really believe on collaboration and teamwork as a way of creating trust and a comfortable, comfortable environment where to learn from the others. And from previous experience, we have to say that we are proud to prove the great development and improvement of our students by applying new methodologies in their design process and being able to transform former abstract concepts into consistent and realistic interior space. That's all from my side. Okay, thank you, Pep. Um, that sounded very interesting. And now you got um, the other postgraduate uh, course in my description. Um, here you see on the screen, you see the title, which is Interior Space Design Private Parameters. And as um, the title already indicates, um, it's, um, it's a program um, with subjects that actually delve uh, into the principles of interior design in relation to a domestic space. Um, like Pep said, um, here we also seek a close to the real world experience and preparation for the students in order to be able to um, successfully uh, face the challenges of the professional world, what they will find once they finish the course. Um, therefore, we will give the tools to solve design problems of a domestic interior and emphasis is placed uh, on spatial comprehension and conceptualization. That is the first phase uh, that is very intense. And that means actually that throughout the course we will emphasize the importance of understanding the design process. The design process is like a guide through how you approach a project and um, how you finish, how you present, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We encourage for innovation and fresh ideas without prejudice of planning and space programming. Each student um, will be able to develop a project that has a lot to do with his own background, his own personality, and that is very welcome. So um, uh, th that's, that's why everybody uh, can plan and, and design what um, is next to his own person. In addition, you will learn about the historical background of interiors and how the concepts of living have changed over time. That is uh, a theoretical part of the course. Very interesting to know where we have to look, which sources we have to uh, relate and, and, and um, take reference uh, when we design. You will learn about the specification of interior materials, of course, finishes, lighting design, installations. Also, sustainability will be a subject um, where you will get in touch with um, the, the way of being more conscious um, of uh, the footprint that we leave in our environment. 
um, you will get knowledge about kitchen design, furniture design, and construction details. And now, um, I show you this, um, this image so you can follow me a, a little bit better uh, by explaining these modules. The whole structure of the course is based on these three modules or, or broken down in these three modules. And the first is the module of criteria. Um, criteria deals with the theoretical approach and the critical reflection upon the professional practice and the creative processes of interior design. Um, you will get in contact with professionals related to the interior design profession, like builders, photo photographers, uh, even a client, that will be invited. And in a two-hour session, they will give you insight um, into their specific relationship with an interior designer and their work. Um, also part of this module of criteria are lectures uh, that you will assist throughout the course of uh, renowned interior designers, renowned architects. Um, you will have a master class about a particular subject related to interior design. Uh, this year, for example, we had a master class about kitchenless uh, cities. And um, that um, was about uh, the, the importance that we give today to kitchens, but in certain circumstances, um, a kitchen is reduced to maybe a little cooking uh, appliance and, and a fridge and nothing else. Um, this also has to do with the, with the development of, of our interiors and how we live, the social changes that we go through in our societies. Um, you will have field trips and site visits to construction places to understand better how construction works for interiors. For interior designers, um, you will see emblematic architecture examples, um, interior design examples. We will go um, to see furniture companies. We will learn about furniture and our references. We will go to other manufacturers uh, that are interesting in our field. Then we have the second module, which is the module of tools. Mm, this module introduces students to building materials and finishes to lighting design, as well as the implementation of installations. Um, you will learn about sus uh, sustainable aspects in interior design and, of course, the construction uh, in this module. Then we have uh, the third one of project. Um, here you will have uh, kitchen design and furniture design, where short practical exercises are offered uh, with workshops and um, you will have a furniture workshop where uh, you will teach production systems uh, by building a prototype and not a one-to-one -one maybe it depends on what the teacher um, chooses but um, at least you will have a hands-on uh, experience so in the same module, we have the interior design project, which is actually the core of the curriculum. Um, in this interior design project, you will apply all the gained knowledge that um, you got in the, in the previous subjects. Um, to develop that project, we offer an almost real case scenario. This is similar to what Pep already explained. Mm, you will get a precise brief of a client uh, with um, a description of, of who the client is, of some specifications of what he needs. Um, and we will visit an actual uh, space in Barcelona, an architectural space where, in which you have to develop this project. We think that the advantage of a real project is that it creates an environment uh, for the students in which they experience the challenges of working within constraints. The constraints of a client's brief, of course, first of all, um, where they have to deal with restrictions, with building uh, regulations, and the limitations of constructions. Whatever you find there, um, you have to 
um, find a solution. On the other hand, of course, it gives you the opportunity to apply your the theoretical knowledge and face, um, face the, the complex issues of interior design, which um, in, in real cases, let's say, when you know the space, when you have been there, when you have taken photos, um, you, of course, experience this in a, in a much better way. So in this kind of project, you can explore new ideas. You can uh, propose innovative um, ideas, innovative projects um, that not only accomplishes the brief in the end, but will be highly functional. Uh, it will give character and meaning to the dom domestic space. And that is highly gratification, gratifying for, for a student, of course. Um, this project will have um, a four-hour class each week once, uh, which, is, um, which has, let's say, the, the, the atmosphere of a workshop. Uh, while we guide, the, the tutors will guide through all the teams and individual uh, students who um, develop the projects throughout these four hours, but at the same time, students will uh, go on with, with um, the work in class. Um, in, in that class, we will encourage you to do a lot of hand drawing, explain your project by hand drawing, uh, of course, you will also do models, physical models, as well as uh, 3D drawings and models. We will uh, ask you uh, to write, as writing is an is a important tool uh, to correctly communicate your ideas, um, and to develop a verbal communication skill, which is something that is mostly mm, forgotten, but in the end, when you face a client and you want to pro uh, pro um, present your project, um, then you have to know exactly how you uh, will express yourself so that the idea is, um, is something appealing to the client. Um, in all these courses that you can see here in the different modules, you will be attended by professionals, mostly architects and interior designers, but of course uh, also from other fields, which is interesting, as then you get a global um, view, let's say, upon our profession. Um, I think for now this is all to understand this course. Mm, is, if there is any question that you have specifically about um, more content or um, how we proceed in the different courses, then please. No conectado, no. I, I maybe add something. Um, what I mentioned before, that this master course is constituted by two postgraduate courses that are, now you know the difference, now we explained exactly how they are. And what we can observe, it depends when the student starts, they can start in February with, with the course that I direct, um, the per, private parameters, and then uh, in September start with, with workspace or vice versa. Um, in the end, what, what we find out is um, that it's a very complete um, education for an interior designer. Um, we practically touch a lot of uh, issues and a lot of um, subjects that um, will really prepare a student um, for the real professional work. So I think um, as a master course, uh, having these two uh, different um, uh, problems, let's say. Um, I think this is um, a, a plus and, and interesting as, as a course to study. Um, one thing that we have been asked many times uh, yeah. by different students in previous programs, it's about previous skills, right? 
and uh, uh, the way you manage uh, interior design through different tools and software. Uh, of course, um, uh, there are like few must, let's say, that, like AutoCAD and if, um, like a bit of knowledge of a 3D tool, maybe SketchUp or Rhino, whatever. But um, we also did in uh, previous years, uh, if like, let's say eight, 10, 12 people from the course need like an extra uh, hour for learning new programs, we can arrange a sort of uh, uh, course to, you know, to learn a new tool. And uh, at the end it's quite important for you to be able to translate no, your ideas into a nice project and uh, without tools it's not possible. So uh, we have e even had people uh, with, uh, let's say, uh, non-design background coming from business and different uh, backgrounds and, and they uh, got to learn uh, this kind of software and they did really nice projects. So, I, yes. I think an important matter to, for you to know. Yes, the experience we have with people who have practically no knowledge in the field because they didn't study interior design or architecture, um, they did pretty well defending themselves with, um, first of all, of course, learning a little bit, but um, actually it's a course that is um, more about understanding what creativity is and if you're interested in being creative and you have a certain inclination then um, you can practically uh, follow the course without any problem and I, I saw people having great success in in the course on the other side sometimes we have had people with really good software skills and no creativity at all right and then <laughs> there is a different issue to work Yes. <laughs> during course. Yes, this is a, a very good question because, um, well, in my part of my work, I I frequently find students they want to to be in touch with interior design, but they come from other profiles, as you told, business. You know what what I want to say. So, how long do you think that they they need to take? Uh, 3D or AutoCAD 2D programs in order to be accepted in the future in, a, in your program? Or maybe what kind of education or bibliography to, to get more information to, to apply for in the, in the future? I would rec recommend them to, uh, to, as soon as possible, start uh, learning uh, AutoCAD and, for example, an, an, an easy and intuitive 3D tool like SketchUp, but as soon as possible, because at the end it, it is a must. But um, I said, and, and just to explain a clear example of a business student, that uh, she took few lessons, <laughs> excuse me, but then once she arrived here, she was the first one to get a job in an interior design office. But it was just a matter of attitude. Yeah. That it's the most important thing. I understand, but sometimes they are very worried because of what they can include as a portfolio during the pre the pre registration. So this is a matter that they worry. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, but a good uh, motivation letter sometimes is better than good software skills. Perfect. Yeah, I think that my question is kind of like also addition to this because probably like when you finish this and then like uh, Rihanna asks me to design her new flat, then uh, I'm not going to do it alone anyway. So maybe I'm better at uh, thinking of the creative concept or how to put something there and then someone else is better in uh, sketching it and explaining it to her, you know? So. I guess in the process also you have teams, right? Yes. So yes. We normally encourage people to team up, at least two or three sometimes. Yeah. It, of course it helps, there will be the imbalance, but um, it, normally it works well because um, it's, it complements you know, each with, with the other student. So um, 
we also accept, at least in, in my course, I don't know if you do that, uh, if people have no no um, ability or, or have any any knowledge of, of these three D programs, um, but they can draw nicely and they can make a presentation that explains very well what they want. That is totally okay. And um, the, the funny thing is that today um, the tendency is going back a little bit to hand drawing and presenting things. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny, but it's um, because it's, it explains so much more emotion. And creativity has a lot to do with emotion. So to transmit this uh, within the field of yeah, hand drawings or collage, um, this is all possible. And the other question is uh, how many crazy projects you get? Like client who wants everything pink and sparkly or like with screens and like let's say like before as well I ask because my background is video projection would it be kind of like possible that there could be someone who wants like just one wall with uh, some kind of moving wallpaper you mean in real life yeah <laughs> there's everything you can expect everything and anything in real life um, I think in 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 our program, um, the good thing is that um, even though we want this to be a, a case very close to reality, our clients are in, in a way um, designed for you, um, not in the crazy way, but your ideas have to be as open mm -hmm and um, innovative and explorative as possible. And we would like this to, to be this way and push this this way, uh, which doesn't mean that it will end up crazy. There is, as I said before, yeah, I understand you, that, that, that there is this um, uh, process of designing and that is a linear process. And that is something that you all have to learn because it helps to approach a project and to finish a project the right way. It's, it's like a, a, a structure of how to work. Um, so within that structure, um, the project itself can be more or less realistic or crazy or funny or whatever it is. And if a client is somebody who, who wants that, you will, you will do it and you will do it well. That's the thing. I just wanted to know, like, the statistics. How many is, like, this normal people kitchens <laughs> and then princess kitchens? Like, it's just an example. Yeah. I never had one. <laughs> and I'm not, not, I'm not sure if I'm happy or not, but I never had one. But it exists, yes, everything exists. Talking about workspace program and, and of course, academic exercises, not, not real life, but uh, we are open to any kind of approach. Uh, for example, last last semester we had a project like linked to the big data, and uh, somehow it was more like a server space than a proper work workplace. And those are like kind of research projects that we like because it becomes part of the of the personal speech of the student, and we love to see a student who. Have who, who has their own narrative, okay? Because at the end, communication is like 100% of the <laughs> of the business somehow, and uh, and the uh, workspace design it's like a new niche with a lot of new opportunities. So probably this this sort of approaches, as the one you said, uh, it's a kind of things that uh, you can implement in workspace and also understanding understanding workspace as a, a new space of the knowledge economy. So from knowledge economy, we can link it not only to workplaces, also to innovation spaces, innovation labs, and whatever leading to knowledge. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much to the online audience. Thank you. Hope to see you soon. Thank you. <laughs>